Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be doing a tear down of this scrapped laser sensor uh, that we got from the garbage. Uh, I took a peek and there's some actually really neat technology going on, so I thought I'd show its internals and uh, hopefully someone finds it interesting. Let's take a look. So all the juicy stuff is in the, the sensor itself over here, but I did take a look in the you know, electronics box, and this is another part we'll look at later. Um, one neat little thing of note is, I've never seen this in real life before, but it actually uses UV EEPROM uh, for storage, and that's going to be hard to see there, but, you know, I love a nice bare die shot. Super, super neat stuff. Shine a UV laser at it, and you can wipe wipe the memory. Pretty neat. Some other cool older electronics on here as well. Anyway, let's take a look at the star of the show though. That is this Cellcom laser profile scanner. Um, we know it's broken and I think I figured out why it's broken but we'll get into that here. Um, I wasn't entirely sure how it worked or what it did so I cracked it open. And here's what we see on the inside. So here is the internals of the sensor. Uh, there's a, we got a laser right here. Um, it's a pulsed diode laser uh, with 675 nanometer wavelength. Hence these windows to only let 675 nanometer through. Um, a neat little, Neat little assembly here for the diodes held in this clamp here, and then you've got a focusing lens or a collimating lens in this, this assembly. That comes out, bounces off of this mirror here, which it's loose on the shaft right now so I can spin it around, but when it's tight, it doesn't want to spin uh, very far at all. So we'll take a look at what's in here because I thought at first, you know, this might just be a motor, right? But when I tried to turn it, it didn't want to turn. And this is where the really neat sort of precision engineering oriented stuff comes in. So we'll get into that in a sec. But you know, bounces off, bounces off the uh, mirror as this thing is oscillating back and forth, does a line scan. There's a little focusing lens here, bounces off the planar mirror. And then there's a little linear CMOS sensor right down in there. A little pre-amplifier board and then signal goes out. So as far as the you know optical principles of how this thing is actually doing the measurement measurement you can sort of you know deduce how that might be working where it scans a line and you know depending on where the the dot falls on the sensor you can sort of determine where that point is in relation to the rest but I'm interested in precision mechanical assemblies and that's what this is right here. So we can pull this out and have a look at it. We need to take the, the mirror out first and then we can pull the actuator through here. So I've already gone in here and done the, the forensics on it so we don't have to worry about the disassembly too much but we've got this nice first surface mirror with a little clamp that goes on the shaft and then here's our shaft and you can see when I try and turn this it's it's very it doesn't really want to turn um, there's a lot of resistance to it in both directions so breaking in here a bit take the cover off this is what we see first so there's some some sort of feedback going on here uh, there's two cables going in and if we look at the ends of the cables, it's clear that some amount of data and some amount of power feeding the thing. So data coming from this feedback and then this heat sink is certainly suspect of some sort of actuator. Um, anyway, the feedback mechanism on this is really neat. So starting from this end here, I've taken the screws out already. We have a sort of stacked 
PCB design where the front PCB actually plugs into this connector through, through this second one. So I can pull that off and immediately met with some really pretty gold plated PCBs here. These brass, brass shims were also sitting there originally. And what we have, what I think we have, is some sort of four quadrant capacitive rotary encoder where you've got these two halves, these two gold plated PCBs, and then this is actually a ceramic rotor which was bonded to the shaft until I broke it uh, and then epoxied it back together just for sort of visual purposes. I'll unplug the second PCB from the that board there and we can slide everything off and take a look. So there's this rotor which is fixed to the shaft and spins in between these two gold plated plates. And I'm assuming it's some sort of capacitive sensor. I don't know for certain. That's just my best guess. Um, if we look at the board that goes with it, there is it's just a bunch of analog circuitry and some sort of transformer there. Um, but here's where I think maybe we have a failure mode, why this thing was in the garbage. Ignore the broken rotor. But when I looked under this, the ceramic rotor had been violently or for a long time at least rubbing on the, uh, the PCB to where it had worn through the gold layer and you can see there's actually burnt resin from the phenolic PCB uh, material or the fiberglass PCB material um, and I would imagine that would affect the performance of the sensor so that might be why this thing was, was in the garbage. But now that we've got the sensor off, we'll pull the board off of here as well. We can actually see why this thing is not a motor. We've got some flexures in there. So it's a crossed leaf uh, flexure hinge, hinge joint. So there's two leaf flexures affixed here and here. And where they intersect, they create a instantaneous center of rotation so this thing can wiggle back and forth with no backlash or hysteresis at all in a very very smooth smooth manner and importantly with a very long lifetime if it's engineered correctly because there's no bearings or anything to wear out and so that's exactly what this is for is it's just meant to oscillate that mirror back and forth and do a line scan with the laser and then looking back here, we have a potted coil in this aluminum heat sink, and then there's just a magnet fixed to the fixed to the shaft. And we have a nice little oscillator. So the reason we have the feedback is this isn't just a dumb oscillator. We looked into the uh, resonant frequencies about 57 hertz of this mechanism, but it's not just a dumb oscillator because we need to know where it is within the scan uh, to use this for an actual uh, measurement uh, system or line measurement system. And so there's actually a servo driver for this uh, mirror scanning system that takes, that takes in the, uh, the feedback from the capacitance sensor and drives the coils. Um, so this is not, this is actually a closed loop uh, tilting mirror um, and it doesn't need to be used in, in resonance necessarily what you can also do is use this as a you know ultra precision positioning device or angular positioning device right or at least that's what I plan on using it for I just thought it was a really neat really neat piece of uh, uh, precision mechanics that I wasn't expecting to find um, it's always cool to see crossed leaf hinges in the wild like that. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll hook this up to a function generator and we can get it resonating just so we can see the, uh, the, uh, the motion that we can get out of this thing. Alright, so I got the actuator set up 
over here getting held down by this Aerotech rotary table because of course um, helium neon laser shimmed with some Chick-fil-A sauce and I'm using my uh, analog discovery 3 from Digilent uh, to drive this with a 3 volt sine wave so I'm not driving it really hard uh, but as you'll see uh, when we get it resonating you don't really have to drive it that hard so laser's pointing uh, at the mirror and then it's up on the wall there you can see the spot going back and forth now note the amplitude of it and I'll kick this thing up to its uh, its resonance frequency here go ahead and give it 57 Hertz which for whatever reason is what this resonates at there's our nice nice line and I say nice because it looks nice to me just a perfect uh, perfect uh, line but unfortunately because its resonance is so close to the frame rate of this camera I'm sure there'll be plenty of horrific beating effects uh, that make it look not as pretty um, but we can turn that off and sort of see it ring down like a TV turning off is what it reminds me of an old CRT television um, but check out the the oscillation here as well really awesome it's super super smooth um, and makes a nice nice line really pretty looking but what we can also do to sort of show off the advantage of the flexures is I will turn this down to 10 millihertz at the same voltage. And now I'm going to need to get up close on it. But that laser is just barely creeping across the wall. Barely moving. And so it really shows how this has the potential to be an extremely precise uh, angular um, indexing system, at least for optical purposes. Um, those flexures just give it amazing smoothness of motion, and the drive is completely non-contact as well. So don't really know what I want to do with this yet. I'm sure there's plenty of fun uses, but you know, you know, something like sub arc second uh, mirror positioning or whatever sounds kind of interesting. Or maybe there's something that could utilize its its resonant capabilities. If you've got any ideas, let me know. Anyway, thought this was pretty cool. Um, just a fun little fun little piece of garbage. Take it apart and find some cool tech inside. Hope you guys enjoyed, and thanks for watching.